worship this morning. A special welcome if you're visiting with us. We're glad you're joining in from from out there or just here. Uh, you'll find the entire worship service printed on the screens behind me. Uh, this morning we we hear a story about a homecoming for Jesus, where he returns to his hometown of Nazareth, and things don't exactly go as planned. At least for the people that are sitting in the congregation, maybe they have this for Jesus more on that to come. We begin with our call to worship. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. God has been to us to be to the Jews to the poor. To proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind. Let us worship the God of justice and peace. Let us pray. God of justice and peace, we do not understand Jesus the prophet. We do not want our hands and feet the oppressed, the prisoners. Forgive us for being insulated and isolated. Open our hearts to the poor and help us to love them as you love them, working to bring them in the good news of the reign of God. In Christ's name we pray. Sing together our gathering song. Good. 
the breakfast this morning? Yeah? No, no, okay. Let me ask you this. All right, you run it all. All right. Uh, I know this hasn't happened over here at the Caribbean Beans, maybe for you. Now, have you ever had a parent or a teacher say, Are you listening to me? Has that ever happened before? No, you are always listening. They always know you're listening. Or maybe they're a little bit upset and they said, What did I just tell you? Has that ever happened before? Or maybe, maybe like the height of all of it is uh, when they really want you to listen, they say your full name, your first, your middle, and your last name. Has that ever happened before? No, it's never happened to you. It's never happened to you. I may have some personal knowledge about that to say that that is not quite true, Lincoln, that that is book. What do you think? Problem? Maybe a time or two? Maybe? Well, I think it's good to talk about listening this morning uh, because sometimes we're not always listening, right? Sometimes we're distracted, we're, we're doing other things, we're paying attention to the, the cool lights or the, the thing glass windows, right? We're not always listening, are we? As we play with our toy up here, right? We're living this out right now. Right? Yeah, and so because uh, Jesus uh, in our text wants uh, all the, the people that are in the congregation to listen to him, because he's got some pretty important things to say. He, he says that, that there's going to be uh, people that are going to be in the congregation that are going to be in the congregation of laws, that he were easily affected by laws. Uh, but Jesus wants to hear some good news and wants to make sure that those around him are listening. And so he's, he's got some good news that he wants to hear. And so he, he wants people to be able to see clearly. He wants those that aren't free to be free. He wants everyone to know about God's love. And so those are, those are things he wants to be able to communicate to people and to make sure that they hear. Do you think the people listening really hear what he has to say? I don't think. I think they really hear what he has to say. Maybe not. Because, yeah, I don't, I don't think they do either. They, they, don't, they don't really hear. At least they don't really want to hear. Uh, but, but Jesus is inviting them to hear because he says that today's scripture has been fulfilled. And, and what he means by that is when they, when they go out and not only listen, but then do what they need to do, then they're, they're living how God wants them to live. And then they're doing what, what, what God wants them to do. Because when we, when we follow Jesus, we learn how to, to fulfill what, what he's talking about. And we, when we do that more and more, like when we come to church, when we're with other people that are part of the community, when we when we pray, when we do all sorts of things like that, and we know that those are ways that we can fulfill what we are talking about. It says today's scripture has been fulfilled in the hearing. He's not just hearing, but he's been going out and doing. Uh, and so that's what that's what we're called to do. Right? So do we listen? Do we hear all that? Well, maybe. Now, I'm like when you're honest, I would start on this. Well, on that note, why don't we say a prayer? That's one of the ways that we can, that we can listen to God. Right? Why don't we fold our hands? And we apply to that. Right? Repeat after me. Dear God, please help us to listen to you. Help us to share your love. So they would know your love for them. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming out this morning. Thanks all. Continue our worship with the reading of Scripture.
Jesus, filled with the power of the spirits, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread throughout all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he'd been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read in the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given. He enrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim relief to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and said, Come. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing, the gospel of the Lord. You can't go home again. It was fame made popular by a Thomas Wolfe novel with the same name. But this is exactly what Jesus attempts to do. His neighbors already knew that their hometown boy was making it quite splash. When they realized Jesus would be in the synagogue at the Sabbath, they cracked it. Every seat was taken, people were lining the walls, some even sat on the floor. Can you imagine the pressure Jesus was under to make a funny showing in front of his friends and his neighbors? You can almost picture him glancing over at his friends and his family longing to make them proud. When the moment arrived, Jesus stood to read. He had arranged for the scroll of Isaiah to be given to him, then he unrolled the scroll. And he unrolled it, and he unrolled it a little bit more before he came to Isaiah chapter 61. And he read this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. After Jesus finished reading from Isaiah, he rolled up the scroll and handed it back to the attendant. Then Luke says, Jesus sat down. To our ears, it sounds like he finished. He read the scripture and he sat down in the end. Reading the scripture and sitting down meant he was prepared to comment on the words that he had just read. The sitting was the customary position for teaching. That's why the next verse says, The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed. It's Luke's way of saying everybody leaned forward with anticipation to hear what the hometown boy who had made good was about to say. In the movie version, the background music would begin and signal a dramatic moment is about to occur. So what does Jesus say? 
He says, today the Scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. In other words, the words of Isaiah were not just for those who lived centuries earlier in the time of Isaiah. Today, right now, the Scripture has been fulfilled. This is God's word to you now. The poor will be gained from the bread lines and sticks and banquet tables. Those who are prisoners of illness and injustice will dance in the town square. Those blinded by greed and fear will have their eyes open to what brings true joy. Those who are oppressed will have the heavy foot pulled off their necks. Luke says, all spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. If Luke had ended the retelling of this incident right there, we would picture Jesus standing at the door of the synagogue shaking hands with smiling neighbors who would tell him about what a fine job he did and regale him with stories from the past. And Luke could have wrapped up his vignette by saying that Jesus did his hometown fine. But of course, that's not where Luke left it. And this was no Norman Rockwell painting that captured an idyllic scene of neighbors dusting over the local boy who was posed to embark on a stellar future. Luke informs us that Jesus chose to push the boundaries. He illustrated his sermon with two stories that made it clear that when he spoke of bringing good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and letting the oppressed go free, he was not merely saying this is what God intends for our people, for our community, for our town, the chosen people. He gave two examples of foreigners to underscore that this is what God envisions for, for all people, even those they consider outsiders, even those they fear. It's a reminder that every time we, we draw a line between ourselves and others, Jesus is always on the other side. Of that line. So in that spirit, Jesus said there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah. And there was severe famine over all the land, and yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow in Sidon. And if that were not enough to drive home his point, Jesus gave a second illustration. There were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha. But none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. Now it is. Hometown boy or not, the people had heard it up. And so Luke writes just after our reading this morning, when they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built. So they might hurl him off the cliff. Quite an inauspicious beginning to his ministry. The people of Nazareth, the people of Jesus' hometown, refused to hear that God's grace and grace is performed. They wanted their enemies to be God's enemies. Doesn't God exclude the same people we want to exclude? So Jesus launched his ministry by announcing what he was about, and, and he would challenge his followers to adopt his ways. The meaning to Jesus is neither for the timid nor those unwilling to examine their own fears. If you've ever helped raise children before, you know how it's just the worst when they use your own words against you. Dad, you said it's not polite to use swear words when you just use one. Say you're sorry. To use a completely hypothetical example that did not happen during the Green Bay Packers football game, Last night. But if there's ever a time, home field advantage, you don't give up an offensive touchdown, you're the number one seed in the playoffs. There were 49 fans wearing jackets in the first service, so. Moving on. Mom, you said it's not okay to interrupt, but you just interrupted me. So could you please wait your turn? Don't. To have your own words, your own stories used against you can just be the worst. 
but, but it's also very necessary to bind evil. Uh, one of my pastor friends recently told me a story that his congregation was putting together what they called guiding principles. These were principles that they felt as a congregation that God was calling them to live by. And so, one of the principles they came up with was everyone is welcome and invited. Everyone is welcome and invited. Here it is. End of story. The congregation voted unanimously to make this their guiding principle. They put it on all the bulletins, all their letterhead, all over their website. And they even put it in large letters in the gathering space so that anyone who walked in that space would see it and would know this is who they were and continue to be as a congregation. A couple of months later, the church received a phone call. The local homeless shelter was going to be doing some remodeling, which meant for the time being there was no place for people who were homeless to go for a shelter. So they were wondering if this congregation would be willing to become a temporary homeless shelter next time. The council was divided, my friend said. Some people thought it was a good idea. Others thought that it would bring smells and wear and tear on the church that no one would want. We don't know these people, and it might be dangerous to house them, these people who are homeless. The debate dragged on and on until one of the council members looked up and saw that that guiding principle was printed in large letters and framed on the wall right beside them as they had this conversation. He said, you know, it says right here that everyone is welcome and invited. It doesn't say except poor people or, or, or people we don't know or, or people who don't smell very good. Their own words used against them. The room got quiet, a sense of embarrassment for us, and it was even up for the police. Moments later, the council voted to house the homeless shelter. It can hurt or, or even embarrass to have your own words used against you. That's what Jesus does. He reminds them that the Spirit of the Lord is pointed towards the margins, the people on the outside looking in, the people on the other side of that line. Jesus reminds them that, yes, Israel has been chosen. That is good news for all people, not just for people in Israel. There's not a fixed quantity, a limited stockpile of God's love. But the choosing of one does not imply a rejection of the other. In fact, it's just the opposite. Israel's chosenness is not for itself, but for others. And as Jesus reminds us in the text this morning, not just for tomorrow, but for today. God's love and grace is wider than we think. And if we aren't uncomfortable with it, then it isn't wide enough in our minds. Church is not meant to be a place where we're always comfortable. Rather, it should be a place where we ask uncomfortable questions sometimes. To discuss hard topics, encounter the very real suffering of others face to face. When we ask to reconcile our grudges for the sake of our unity in Christ, even Packers and 49ers fans this morning. Arizona State, Arizona, or whatever kind of division you have in your mind, it's maybe a little more serious than university or sports issues. We've been asked before and will be asked again to help someone or some community that we've never met in our lives. This is how we live as one body of Christ. Trusting that every person in this place and outside of this place has a gift to offer us. A perspective, an insight, a a wisdom we need in order to live as Christ asks us to live. If we really seek to follow Jesus, we'll be asked to do hard things, things that will threaten our current way of life. But we can do hard things. Maybe we can't go home again in the way that we might envision. God has a new vision in mind. So may God make us uncomfortable for the sake of good news to the poor, for release and freedom to those who are held captive by this life, and so that those who are blind might finally see things as they really are. Amen. Amen.
sermon song together. together the words that are found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son on earth, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in his spirit. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He is sinning in heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life of the last Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us pray to God who is made manifest in Jesus Christ. As the prophet Isaiah rang out, arise, shine, for your light has come. Empower your church, O God, to ring out the good news of the light of your Son, Jesus, which pierces even the deepest darkness. Lord, in your mercy. As a star rose high into the nighttime sky, to draw the nations to the Christ child, send your blessing, O God, on this nation, in every nation, and draw the whole world to your peace and truth. Lord, in your mercy. 
And John the Baptist guided throngs of people to the edge of the wilderness and baptized Jesus in the river Jordan. We pray that you would guide our country and our leaders to the ways of justice and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, as Jesus climbed the mountaintop and proclaimed blessings on the people of the world, we pray for the sick and the distressed, the poor and all people in need. We especially lift up aloud those in our hearts and minds in need of your healing at this time. Lord, in your mercy. As Jesus called his disciples to leave their nets and boats and follow him, we pray for those we love and who have answered your eternal call to follow Jesus to your heavenly people. Give them your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, light of the world, hear our prayers and make us reflections of your light. The places of darkness in our world will be pierced by your light, and that all nations will be drawn to you and overwhelmed with joy. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, you have the opportunity to bring forward your offering of the offering baskets that are available on the, off, on the altar rail um, in the hunger jar, which always goes to support ministries outside of our walls that we place below that. Now, this month, for the hunger jar, uh, we are using what we collect uh, for uh, an event we're going to have at the end of the month where we're going to pass out poetry bags uh, to people in need in the, in the surrounding area. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Creator of the universe, we stand amazed at your power and glory. We are eager to worship you and offer our praise. For we are often reluctant to answer the pleading here you calling our name. 
we sing our songs of tribute to the sanctuary and shy away from the river, lest we be baptized with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Forgive us the need for which your promise to be with us always, O God. Renew us with the power of your ever-present love and strengthen us to proclaim your justice throughout the world. Hear words of grace from our Creator, spoken to Prophet Isaiah. I have called you by name. You are mine. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took that. He broke and he gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us now into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God to the people of God. All are welcome. Amen. You may be seated. If you'd like to receive a gluten-free wafer or grape juice, let one of these assistants know as you come forward.
and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us to keep us in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, wondrous God, for Jesus, God with us, and His gifts of bread and wine. As, you, as we have shared this feast of love, strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One really quick announcement before the benediction. My, my parents are in town this weekend, Mike and Jill. Um, so we are, we are thrilled to have them. They're enjoying Warmer weather here in Arizona than they're used to this time of year in Northern Illinois. So I think they're enjoying that as well. So I'll make sure you say hi to them. And if you have a complaint with me, you can blame them. So you can you can take that up with them as well. Uh, yes, there you go. Let's follow that for a benediction on that note. We all need a blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We sing together our Sunday song.
Thank <laughs> you. 